Hi everybody, it's Robbie, and yes, it's the mid-July garden tour. Let's walk through and see what changes are going on because things are just growing everywhere and I'm so excited to have some warm weather. <laughs> so let's go do the garden tour for mid-July and see what's really going on in the garden. So here we are, middle of July already. Can you believe it? Here is the front yard and here is where I put the tool and it is loaded with zucchini. I'll get in there and show you soon, but there's zucchini in here. Look at the zucchini down there. I believe these are all black beauty. At least that's what the seed said that I planted here. And then of course, this one that I didn't even know was there. Look at that. The other one was six pounds. This one could be six pounds if not bigger. So I've got to get that off today. But this tool has kept all the, oh, look at this, a true bumblebee. Gary says most of the black ones we have are carpenter bees. The hummingbirds just chased them off. He's checking everything out. I don't see a lot of real bumblebees. I see a lot of carpenter bees and I'm quite excited about that. Look, okay, we all have to stop and look at this. Okay, he's gone. Now we can go on. I'm just, you know, it's so funny because I used to run from all this and now I'll just stand there and the, the carpenter bees follow me around and I realize they're not going to hurt me. They're actually doing so good for my garden. Look how beautiful it is. All right, let's see. Let's talk a little bit of what I'm doing here. This is a container that I'm really composting in and I'm throwing kitchen scraps and just some wood chips on top and things, whatever I've got from the garden. And when I water it, I have a cover over that. I don't know. I thought maybe something might bother it. Nothing has. But when I water it, it's going down here and it's feeding this little zucchini I just planted that just started the zucchini. I don't know if the first one will make it, but if it doesn't, because it's yellow on the tip, I'll just grab it off and use it in something right away. They're still good. Don't toss those out. If worse comes to worse, compost them, but they're still good. So when I water the top, it just waters that. I don't have to think about it. And I put a watering can in there so I can catch it and water some of the other plants with the runoff because that is like gold. There's worms in there and it doesn't matter. There's microbes, everything's breaking it down. So I can use that water to water some of the other plants around the yard. Of course, my flowers are going, the lettuce is all bolting and the tomatoes haven't stopped. They have not stopped. I threw a little bit of tool around it, but it's kind of a haphazard job but nothing's really bothered it. So it doesn't, you know, I haven't really done anything else yet. I started putting the posts around to do a little bit more. So I will probably, maybe, maybe not. I'll see if anything bothers it. So the tomatoes are doing great. There's some cuttings from the dinosaur kill down there that have gotten huge. And of course there's even sprouting broccoli back there that I must've stuck some cuttings in and they just took off. See that, we can take a walk over there real quick. See the tops, this is what you break off and eat. And there's a whole bunch of them. This is sprouting broccoli. And yes, I did do a cutting and I better grab some more cuttings and get them going. Mmm, so, they're so sweet. Oh, I love them. I shouldn't be eating and talking at the same time. Garlic chives down there growing underneath the tool. And this is just some zucchini I just started. So we'll see how it goes. And then mint, just for whatever in a pot. My red vein sorrel, there's still flowers. Of course, this flowering here is celery. That's the peppermint stick. It lost a lot of its red coloring. It doesn't matter to me, but it's flowering. And then that's that fig tree that I actually stuck a stick in one of my compost bins, started to grow. And it's in a pot now. And then there's some peppermint back there. So let's keep going, because I don't think there's anything else that exciting here. This is still going strong. This is amazing to think how long tool will last. Look at that. And what I did on top, because it's been so sunny and I wanted to leave my purple tree colored here, is I took a little tiny piece of shade cloth and I just put with clothespins. And it, that's the only one that made it. I ended up, I had three. I ended up with one that looks like it's gonna make it. That one hopefully will make it, we'll see. But I sure would tell you the tree color that I grow here, the green, grows really easy. You just break a piece off, stick it in the ground, it takes off and grows. So I don't know if purple is not happy here tree, tree collared. I don't know if the cuttings were not that great. Um, when the plant, even if it was ready to have any limbs removed, if it was flowering, it may not have had the right hormones in the branches itself. And it's possible that maybe 
it wasn't at the right time clip. There could be a lot of different reasons why it didn't grow, but the other two did completely rot out. Never, never tried or attempted to grow at all. But that one looks like maybe it will make it, we'll see. Then this is all my greens. Sorrel is in here. This is just the green one, all the walking onions. I don't know if you go back to the last one from last year, the garden tour, but you will see that last year, I couldn't grow anything in these bricks. The rabbits would come, the squirrels would come, probably even rats at night, and chew everything down, and it was just sparse. With this little bit of tool here, everything grows. The only thing I've lost in here is maybe whatever slugs get in there, because you can't really block the slugs out, and I'm not even trying. There are ways of getting rid of slugs, but I'm not even trying. There's so much, I don't worry about it. And I've got those uh, other snails that eat slugs, they were here on the property when I moved here back in the 80s, and they will eat slugs and other snails. So that's really, really cool. Oh, real quick over here, there's my blueberry pants, plants, and I haven't done anything with them yet. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. This is that tomato. Remember this tomato that I started in the beginning of the year, I trimmed it up? That little stick, look how bad this stick looks. This is all it. Look at that we keep picking and picking off of this one stick here that really should have been pulled out it's got so many limbs on the top it is one happy camper it just keeps going and going and i keep stringing it around i'm using both a yarn a real pretty yarn i got from the dollar store look at that and so i'm using yarn and i'm using my famous masking tape. I love masking tape. So whatever I feel like using, whatever I've got. I put the poles together really easily and fast with the zip ties like I showed you in other videos. And now I can extend those poles as long as I want. And so I extended them all the way across so I can put that tomato plant there. Now this is the issue. Two seeds came up here. I don't remember if I planted them or if they came up. And these, here's the other one is either a spaghetti squash or a hybrid spaghetti squash with zucchini because these are my own seeds. Now when this started to grow, this particular one, all the, fl uh, the fruit on the end started to die. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to save it, but what I did was, let's see if we can get you in here. See the coffee container? I'm now composting in place in that coffee container. I can lift it, move it, but let's see if I can get you in here. See, I can water in there and I'm putting kitchen scraps and whatever I want in there. And I might put a second container in there because this is a massive plant growing a massive fruit. So there's, and the same one there, I haven't strung that one up yet or done anything yet. That's why it's falling. That's probably my to-do job this week. But this one I strung up, see? And these are again the poles that are just zip tied. Strung it up with yarn. Oh, this thing weighs a ton. So we'll see. Now there's a couple things I could do with this. If I really cared about the plant and wanted to get more fruit, and if that doesn't work because I just started the compost in place, I could remove this fruit now. My hands are dirty, sorry, I've been gardening. Um, I could remove this fruit now, and you could use it unripened, it doesn't matter. I've used it like you would use zucchini. Zucchini, when you pick small ones, those aren't ready to be picked yet, but that's when people pick them. We'll get into that later. That is a red tail. Um, anyways, those are ready to use and people use the small ones. Those are babies. Well, this is babies too, and believe you me, I have cooked these and these are fine. You can shred them and put them in enchiladas. You can cut them up and fry them with butter. Okay, real quick, I'll tell you a story on that. This is a baby red tail hawk that mom has and dad have parked here. And he's screaming because he's starving, and they only come once in a while to feed him. He's up the tree. Now, they're very dangerous at this point in their lives because they have no idea what to eat and how to eat it. So when they're hanging around screaming, they've left him there to try to hunt, probably here because we have so many rabbits and squirrels. But the point is I've got to watch my Yorkies because they don't have the thought process yet is is it too heavy for them to pick up and I've actually seen a hawk pick something up that was way too big for them and then they just put their talons through it they'll kill it and just leave it and continue on their way so they, he makes me nervous around here but there's nothing I can do and he follows me around and he's been in my garden so we'll see what happens this is the stevia ginger and turmeric table 
and it is doing great. Let's see what's going on. Of course, the turmeric are the ones with the big leaves and the ginger. It's so easy to pick out which is which. That's why you can grow it together if you want. Are the ones with the skinny leaves. They're all doing really good. This is my black turmeric. So I'm really excited on that. I had teeny little pieces. Gary took the big pieces, but I had two teeny little pieces that broke off of the hand when it came in the mail. So I said, I'll take those two. And here, I can uncover this and show you. Look at that. There's one there, and isn't that beautiful? This is to mark it to remind me that this is the black turmeric. So I keep it covered because I don't want anything to eat it until it takes off. But it is doing good. Now this is interesting. It's starting. Out of all the ginger growing, you'll see all that ginger back there and over here. This is ginger that I grew, you know, that was organic, grew in my yard. This is the ginger from the store. See, even this one is what I grew. Look how big it is. This is the one from the store. This is store-bought. Now I did the process of soaking it, but it's not all growing. I've got one piece here that's growing and a little bit there. So I'm not sure if it had a growth inhibitor on it, which they're supposed to have now, and it's trying to fight the growth inhibitor and it will grow, or if it's just a coincidence. But there's a bunch of pieces in there that were store-bought earlier this year, and that's the slowest out of all of my ginger growing on the table. Like I said, they're all huge already and they're getting bigger and bigger now. <sighs> okay. So I'm not, I'm really not sure, you know, if this is because it's store bought, but keep in mind, and I want I don't know if I did the video on that or not, if I was going to and I didn't, or if I did. When you buy ginger from the store and you want to grow it, soak it overnight in water. It can be tap water, it can be bottled water, it doesn't really matter, soak it overnight. If it's got a growth inhibitor on it, you can possibly get a lot of it off. But if it doesn't have a growth inhibitor and it has been irradiated to stop the growth, and they do this so it won't sprout in the store and it's for shelf life. They'll last for six months, nine months, a year with the growth inhibitors. If it's been irradiated, it's dead. Sometimes when they're radiated, you'll see a little nodule start to grow, a little bit starting to just, start. it looks like it may grow and then it stops. So that's the only thing is there is no way to know if it had a growth inhibitor put on it. it could be a dusting, a liquid, whatever they toss it in, or if it was irradiated. It will not tell you. And from what I've read, 99% of all ginger and turmeric now are treated with some sort of growth inhibitor that goes into the store. So keep that in mind. All your spices now, they, they said they do that with. Now let's go into the main garden. So now I'm in my garden and this I would recommend not to do. I let the volunteers grow. Look how beautiful and look at the tomatoes. I have no idea what kind of tomatoes, but they'll probably be on the small side because most of the tomatoes we grow are cherry type tomatoes, small ones. Look at that all full there and they're just full of tomatoes all throughout the whole thing down there i just the more i look the more i see and there's even cucumber coming through i saw it somewhere well, i know it's oh see there it's, that's the cucumber vine. oh my goodness you know you must think and honest to, honest i'm gonna say this honest to god i did not know this was here this is no joke and i do not use his name in vain i come through here doing a garden tour and I find things that I did not know was there. I got to get that off because I'm pickling all those and I don't want them to get too big. But this is not the way you're supposed to grow it. I should have gone through there, picked out what I wanted, but the volunteers came up, they got past me and they're growing. So you know what? At this point, whatever happens, happens. I will leave it. And then as they start to die back, cause they're gonna be fighting each other, but geez, there's so many. I will thin it down, but this is not the way to do it. And there's probably more cucumbers in there I'll have to get. I've got tomatoes, squash, and cucumbers growing in here. And this is probably a zucchini, but oh yeah, I'm sure there's zucchini in there. I see some small ones. And then here is that Bradley, and I know everybody's saying, well, that's why your Bradley's not growing. No, the Bradley wasn't growing in the beginning. 
This was designated to grow the Brad's, I guess it's called Brad's Atomic Tomato, and it never grew here. It grew on my deck. Oh my goodness. That plant on my deck in, a, in one of the compost in place containers, it has over a hundred tomatoes. But here, it, it, maybe it's the wind, the canyon, it didn't like it. And maybe on the deck, because the deck is covered in like glass around, you know, the fencing is glass. And maybe it's just slightly protected. There's something different. Remember, your whole yard is microclimates. So it's doing better there than it did here. But obviously these tomatoes are doing really good. There's just more. And the more I look, there's this has got hundreds of tomatoes on it. So whatever happens to that one happens, I'll plant some more. I bought it on eBay. You can get it. From Baker Creek but I had some eBay bucks so I bought the Brad's atomic tomatoes on eBay and it was like two dollars or something for 30 seeds I planted four three or four and let me tell you the I, plant, I was really cheap I only planted a few and they all grew so I've got a whole bag full so I can grow more this is the red tub that I showed you in a past video how I was going to put all my kitchen scraps in and move it when I didn't know what to do with it well, I changed my mind. I don't do that anymore. You can do it. Everything I did in the video is perfectly fine, but I am now doing it in buckets. And the reason I'm doing it in buckets, I'll post my video in the description and I'll post it at the end. I can move it. I can dump the bucket if I decide to set up somewhere or leave the bucket on top of anywhere, whether it's next to something growing in the ground or something growing in a container. I love the bucket method. It's working better and it's easier and I'm in the easy because if it's not easy, you're not gonna do it. Back here, just some more things growing up. See, I don't know if you notice, I have been clearing. I can now walk and service my garden down here. It's a little cubby hole, but that's okay. I can walk. Is that cool? And yes, more tomatoes. I've got more squash starting, red vein sorrel. This was just taken off of my big plant and it's growing, walking onions and tomatoes everywhere, lemon verbena and the dinosaur kale, that old one, which I'm slowly trimming back, but not taking out. So I'm trying to make sure that I can service my garden easier. And this is what this is all about now. Even here, see now, I can walk completely back here. I can get to this lemon verbena here. I can get to this one here. I can come back, trim the plants, try to get rid of this thing that's growing through my yard so I don't get stuck by this uh, cactus. And that's the dragon fruit cactus. And believe you me, it comes through and I'll grab something and wow, I told Gary, put it in your yard. But I can now start to service and I can get in there and do more things. And that's what this is all about. And I love it. So I can get in there now. This is what I've been working on. It's always, you know, in progress. Let's see, back here, nothing's really going on. Same old, same old celery. That's just a whole bunch of dinosaur kales when I'm trimming, I trim a bunch and then put them in a pot in case I want to move them somewhere. More lemon verbena and a little slow. Let me see if we can get you back here on the mushroom plant. But you know what is coming so we'll see. And then that's all tree collard. See how that roots? That just stick in that bucket there is tree collard. I've been trimming the tree collard, putting the branches in and they just take off. All right so let's keep walking. See I literally came out here to have coffee not to do a garden tour right now. I was going to do it later. But it's so quiet and beautiful, I thought I'm just gonna go for it now. All right, um, that is the purple sprouting broccoli. I have left all the seeds for the birds to eat, so I'm not trimming it back right now. And as you can see, I have done a lot of trimming, but I have left a lot of seeds. You can see the goldfinches right now as we're standing here are eating. I mean, the goldfinches need seed. I don't need it. They come in by the hundreds now. That's a funny thing. When Gary first came here, this was over 25 years ago, he was so excited to see a goldfinch. Oh my gosh, he would just be so excited because I rarely had goldfinches, like hummingbirds, mind you. And it was such a treat to see them in the yard. Now, like hummingbirds, we have hundreds. This is a haven for them. And this is exactly where they want to hang out and stay. So they've got their food, they've got their water, and it's just wonderful. Anyways, I trimmed back a lot of the sprouting broccoli that did have seeds, and a lot of the seeds had already been eaten. This is the sprouting broccoli, and it is trying to do something again. And I had Gary take those bricks that I had put down there a long time ago. He put bricks, and that was so I could have a planter. Well, I don't need a planter anymore. I plant a lot differently, and I also want to plant in the ground. So he took the bricks, and I've been trimming and trimming and trimming, 
and this is what I want to do is make things easier so let's keep going there's a tub I never could use last year I couldn't even get to that black tub now some volunteers came up of course tomatoes and I'm going to leave them and see how they go but I can get to them it's the whole idea of gardening is make your life easier We've got um, the strawberry mint growing down there some chocolate mint in a container there chocolate mint growing around the base of that old bird stand I've got there let's keep walking see the goldfinches they're trying to come in and I'm bothering them they want to take a bath they want to drink this is what they do all day and then of course here I've got some more sprouting broccoli and I'm probably again going to leave all these seeds I prefer doing cuttings because if I try to take the seeds and try to grow them I don't know if it's going to be like a collared cross and what it's going to be like so I just take cuttings and they grow see all the broccoli been snapping them off this morning just walking through and eating them and it grows even more it'll have a whole bunch of heads if I would take all the seeds off then it would put more effort into trying to grow more but no biggie I have so much here I don't need anymore more tomatoes coming up in there and there's that curry plant that I have yet to ever use but I liked it it was a teeny little plant it's some sort of herb and let it do its thing and then, of course, water features. You've seen all my water features. This is a dazzling, no, wait a minute. Is this a dazzling, yeah, this is a dazzling blue kale. I believe it's so big, I forgot what it was. Look at this. I did a video on this a while back where I dug a hole, dumped all my kitchen scraps, and covered it. And if you have to, you can put a brick on it. And this thing just shot up. It was a little plant on the ground. Look at that. It just shot up. It's literally a tree. What do I have to go buy a tree colored for? I've got trees. You just direct them up and if I cut the top I would get a whole bunch of side shoots growing but I'm not going to cut the top right now I really enjoy watching the birds sit in that so I've got trees in my yard that are not really trees but they're food okay and then over here trying not to move the camera too much are all my pepinos look at that full now this I did tool to the ground I don't want anything touching it and it's doing really well tool has changed my life and tool if you don't know what it is it's a fine netting too fine for birds to get stuck in but the only thing that doesn't like it are rodents squirrels rabbits because it's so fine they think it's a trap when they touch it they just get out of the way they think they're going to be caught so they leave i love tool without tool i would have half i would actually have half of what i'm growing now and then more water features all through the yard celery onions more tomatoes growing back here and see here cleared off a lot of the mint i can now come back here and service everything clean up the leaves remember you don't ever throw leaves away go through here and then again more this is this is strictly collared and i am leaving this for the birds right now so i can actually walk in here and work in my garden and that to me is so important that I can literally work in my garden. That's beautiful dazzling blue kale. And I've got to get that strung up a little bit better. It's so heavy. Either top it and let it grow or just stake it a little better. And I'm working on that. So we'll see how that goes. And that's tree collared back there. Of course, you know that it's like 10 feet tall. And those were little things. And I am taking more and more cuttings off of that so we'll see how that goes see some of the leaves on top are purple that's how they get a lot of these new colors is some plant will throw something odd and then what somebody will do is clip that off and start to work with it and maybe I should take that branch on the top because that one there's one branch I see I didn't see it before until just now with you all that has a purple leaf so I might think about taking something off of that and working with that Okay, let's see. Uh, red vein sorrow. This, like I said, I took a lot of the spearmint out. Can't get rid of it. I'm going to have plenty for tea. No big deal. And then there is hummingbirds. No. Um, celery. We went to see more tomatoes just starting coming up through here. See my tomatoes? And then the lemon balm, which is still in the original container but has long left. And the roots are in that container there. There's where the pack rat lives. Funny, last night we were out here, Gary and I. I didn't have my camera on. I didn't have my camera with me. I don't. Well, I had it with me, but I didn't have it on. And the pack rat was fighting with something else. Probably another rat came in the area and he chased it off because this is his territory. So as long as he doesn't get into my way, he can stay. He gets in my way, he will be going 
to the farm. We won't get into that. But he hasn't been bothering me. He hasn't touched anything that I have seen. Here is my sage. And of course, this whole thing here, there's a little bit of strawberry mint back there in a pot, but this is all chocolate mint. Celery going to seed. And then back here, last year I took all my baby walking onions and stuck them in there. I think I'm going to do it here. Start sticking all my baby walking onions and start that and then make another nursery because they are walking everywhere. Look at all the onions, literally walking everywhere. And everybody will tell you you've got to wait till they're big and, and, all, and then you can take them off when they're much bigger, they're too little. And my mother asked me once, well, can't you take them off or if they fall when they're little and plant them and won't they still grow? And I told her I didn't know. So I tried it, and yes, I have actually grown them at this stage, just snapped them off, put them in a pot, even at that stage, and they have grown. So right now I'm leaving them, but any of them that have fallen over, I'm grabbing them and putting them in that other place. See, this is what I'm doing here. This is fantastic. My kitchen scraps go in here. My leaves from the garden goes in here. Now, if I wanted it to break down even quicker, I would put some soil or something on top. But since I continue, to put things in here. Remember, this is the top, will turn to be underneath the top. So it doesn't matter, I don't bother. Holes, people have asked me, do you put holes? Yes, you want it to breathe. Keep the holes small, and you won't have roaches in there, you won't have anything in there. And if you've got raccoons, put a lock on it. Um, I don't have raccoons, or at least they don't bother anything. This was a spur of the moment bought, I shouldn't have bought, I got a tray of corn, and it was oversized, and Really, if I wanted to grow corn, I should have just bought seeds or put seeds in there. I put the one tray in there. It's probably not going to grow. So in the meantime, whatever happens to it, look at the corn. Whatever happens to it, happens to it. But hopefully this will give it enough food. There's some other squash and different things growing in there. But it was an impulse buy, which I don't like doing. But I guess we all do it all the time. And we'll see what happens. Now, the reason people have asked, why don't you grow corn? Same reason I don't grow potatoes. I live in Southern California, and they put corn on sale all the time. Right now, at one of our big grocery sp stores, Sprouts, you can get six corn, and they're sweet and they're good. Yes, I know they're probably GMO'd and all that, but six corn for a dollar. I would knock myself out watering, cleaning, taking care to get six corn. And in that, let's say I grow 12 corns. So I have now worked for months to get 12 corns out of there for $2 when I could have put greens in there or squash in there and gotten 100 to maybe $500 worth of fruit. And that's why I look at it that way. Same thing with potatoes. If I grew a bunch of potatoes in there, if I got 10 pounds, too many times they have 10 pounds for a dollar, 10 pounds for $2. That's not to say I don't want to grow it. I'm planning on doing different things, but that's the main reason I concentrate on greens. A teeny bundle of greens organic is anywhere from two to four dollars. And teeny, teeny, okay? Look at all the greens. So you got thousands of dollars worth of greens in your yard, and I got two dollars worth of corn. So that's the way I'm thinking, but I'm not saying I'm right because I did grow corn and I enjoyed it. My daughter came and even grabbed some corn. But I think of space and what I can grow in there instead. And if I decide ever to do something on the outside, where we'll go where we've got the vehicles, that would be the place to plant a whole bunch of corn. Some place that you just put them in the ground, don't think about it, whatever grows, grows. But right now, no. Been trimming too, see, I can get back here now and I can, take care of my other tree collar that kind of went that way. I can take care of my beautiful dazzling blue kale. And maybe I'll even be able to get back to those tubs again that I planted in last year and plant in there. So I'm making paths in my garden that I can get into. And that's important. My eggplant's making a comeback, trimmed it back. And it's starting now. Did a hard trim to see if that will grow, so we'll see. And then there's your pur uh, purple curly leaf doing really good. I did plant an eggplant down here. So we'll see how this all goes. This is doing beautiful. I had trimmed that one back in a video because it was so tall. Isn't that gorgeous? Just a beautiful, beautiful plant. And then of course this, well there's, I really haven't done much with that tower. There's a strawberry plant or two in there. But then of course, as I was saying, this is the collard that's growing. This is literally, I bought it at the 99 cent store. It was a one little pot 
It wasn't a tray. It was just one little pot with four plants, and I stuck the four plants around the yard. And that is where all my collard came from. And they have just gotten, this thing has gotten massive. Look at this. One plant. Now it is in the way and I keep saying I'm going to cut it down but I have trimmed a lot of it so I can get in there and I'm trying to work on that other container back there. So we'll see how it goes. And then of course I haven't done anything here. I've been collecting leaves and this is where I put my cleaning stuff too until I figure out where I'm going to put it. I want to set up a whole bunch of those mobile type compost in place containers. I can't believe how great that is because I can just pick it up if I don't want it there and move it. In fact I might put one in here too. For the papayas, look at that. Gary's excited. He's going to get his first strawberry papaya very soon. And that one is now flowering. So maybe it's going to do good. It's got one fruit. We had figured the second one would never do any good. But we didn't want to pull it down because if we cut something, we could disturb the whole ecosystem growing here because maybe it was just protecting the plant, you know, the other one. So we th I told Gary, let's leave it. You know, this was never planned. Don't say... Oh, she's crazy. Why did she plant those great big things in this plastic tub? This is where I compost in place. This is where it grew, and it grew so fast that I left it. We did cut the bottom, so it has set root into the ground. Unplanned. A lot of my stuff in my garden is unplanned. I like it that way. Sometimes the ones you plan and think about don't work. And then there's the moringa. We trimmed it all back. Gary got down there and figured out what was not growing, what stems were not good. We left some for the birds to sit on, and it is coming back now. We had a hard winter. I don't even want to say winter. We didn't have a hard winter. We had a hard spring. Our spring was winter. We were cold. It was snowing in May in some areas out here, so it was really cold. We, had, we went from winter that felt like spring into spring that felt like winter, and now we are warm. Tomatoes, that one came up. I can't remember if that's a cutting. I think that one came up on its own. Strawberries. Are, oh, there's some more strawberries back there. There was one the other day I told Gary to take it. That one's a little dried out. I don't think anything ate it. I think it just grew weird. But there's a strawberry. I told him to take it. He said, no, you take it. We debated all day who was going to take it, and something else took it. So when I see them and I want them, I'm taking them. More walking onions down there. The whole yard, I know I'm not stopping for them, is full of walking onions and garlic chives. That's garlic chives back there. Everybody should grow garlic chives. It is so good. I even used it in my last set of pickles I made. Since I didn't have garlic, I just used the greens and it pickled up beautiful. Not to eat, well you could eat it, but to give a garlic flavor into my pickles. And they're easy to grow. They're the easiest thing to grow. Let's swing around here. Really haven't done anything. This is celery that I went to seed. There's still peppermint growing in here. And then some purple. Well, there's the purple. Kale. Oh my gosh, look at me. <laughs> I look like a mess. Uh, I, like I said, I wasn't planning on doing a garden tour right now, but I came out here. I figured, see, now they're starting to work around the area. It was so quiet, I grabbed the camera and said, I'm going for it. Now it's quiet. So there's a purple curly kale uh, that is growing. And like I said, I haven't done anything. It's kind of growing in a wild state right now. Nothing's been done in there. And then this has been trimmed. As you remember, the last one, it went up to the ceiling of the roof. Well, we decided it probably wasn't a good idea. Probably was not a smart idea where I planted it. So I cut it back and it will start to push out lower. And we'll see what happens with that. And then this is the tomato. I would say it has seen better days, but it hasn't because it was a skinny little cutting that came off another one. So it's never had better days. It keeps trying, but I think I'll put something else there. Okay, let's go into the backyard, which where I haven't done anything yet, really, and see what's going on out there. Nothing. I haven't touched it since um, that's the same tool I threw over there and all my, what is it, cucumbers got eaten, so I haven't bothered with it. I haven't really done a lot, my rosemary. The citrus trees are full. Look at that. Absolutely packed with fruit. We get so many oranges and they're so sweet, I can't believe it. They're beautiful. And there's the papayas, of course. Again, these were not planned. We didn't plan to grow them in these small containers. You've seen all the videos, or if you haven't, you can go back and see it. They came up in my compost in place. We left them. And sometimes, like I said, the unplanned is the best. So there is the papayas. They're doing great. And they're starting to fill out. Let's see, what else do we have there? More rosemary. This was something I bought a pot. I don't think I ever talked about it. The 99 cent store had 
it was after the holidays, these big pots there for a dollar and they had all kinds of herbs in them and they had multiple rosemaries in there little teeny little plants so I stuck them all over and that's how we ended up with all this rosemary they just took off I didn't know they grew into big bushes and that's fine orange trees I've got to move them they came up in my compost in place I've got to get them in a pot because there was no holes on the bottom just on the sides so I want to get them into something and see if they take off and this papaya, it's starting to get come back. I don't know if you saw it or remembered it in the past videos, but all the leaves had died back because it was so cold. Well, it's made a beautiful comeback and celery fell over, it got so heavy. Just a celery that came up in there and it went to seed. And then see another rosemary back there. So I haven't done anything back here. Let's turn around and walk to the wall. Here's the bathtub that I had all these plans on, and I still haven't gotten to it, but I did stick a zucchini plant in here, and I am sure there's zucchini in here. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Ouch. They got thorns. The leaves are spiky. There's zucchini all through there. There's zucchini, all, oh, my goodness, all through here. Look at that. Yep, there's all zucchini through there, so I'm going to have to get some of that off, too. And this is doing really good. The rest, I haven't done anything. I have not done anything and I don't know if I'm going to bother right now uh, because I'm still working in my garden. There's nothing here I have to plant that I have to grow. The old tomato plant's kind of hanging on with old tomatoes. The moringa's doing beautiful. It's all full of flowers so we'll have all kinds of pods again. Celery. The eggplant needs a good trimming but I see eggplant. I didn't see it the other day. Look at that. So the eggplant's coming back on its own. And then of course, that's just some Swiss chard. And I am planning on doing the tubs, but here's the thing. I don't have to worry about that. I'm doing water features and everything in the yard and I'd like to be able to sit down for 30 minutes and watch the birds. So if I don't get to this right now, I can do this even over winter. I don't want to talk about winter yet, but they're playing Christmas shows on TV already, Christmas in July. Um, and I can slowly fill this up with all kinds of stuff from the garden, you know, dead leaves and stuff. Get this all prepped and even have it ready for next year. I'm in no hurry. It, I just, you know, think ahead and think of how you want to do it. Even all these weeds, we have left all the sow thistle for the goldfinches because the goldfinches love it. A lot of the other birds love it too. And when they're all brown and done, just pick them and throw them straight into the containers that I've sat there. Because I do plan on having all those gray tubs there because the wall is warm because I could do a winter garden there so that's what my plans are is a winter garden so otherwise nothing else is new the avocado tree is still going strong there's still three baby avocados on there if the avocados do not taste good if it loses the avocados I don't even see them but I know I saw them the other oh there they see there's one Let's see if I can get up here tree's getting bigger and bigger. There's one there. And there's the other one. Right there. You right there? And there's another one tucked away somewhere. Unless it dropped it. If it's no good, the tree's going to go. Because I'm not grafting right now. And it really should be in this truck bed. It has no way to set off its root system somewhere. So it's going to be very hard to grow in here. This is all red Swiss chard, green Swiss chard. There's even garlic chives in there and different things like that. I tried to plant squash and immediately didn't make it because the avocados probably put something out to not let certain things grow. If you notice, nothing grows under avocado trees really. So it didn't really make it. I do have a tub in there that I've been throwing stuff in. Let's see if we can get back there. Now I could plant in tubs on top, and that was the other option. I was thinking of putting containers all through the top and then planting that way, because that wouldn't interfere with the roots, plus it would water the avocado and feed the avocado, but we'll see. I, we water it, we take care of it, we harvest for our green drinks, our eggs, different things we use, whatever we use greens for. I do harvest the greens. I let a lot of it go to seed here because the birds have been hanging out and eating it. So, no biggie, no hurry, whatever I decide. Years ago, we had 50 spaghetti squash growing in there, but I could not do that with the avocado tree in there. And I don't know if I even want to grow that much spaghetti squash again. Nobody wanted it. They all got sick of spaghetti squash. So we'll see what happens with that. And I am going to move those cages. I'm covering two Swiss chards that I don't really need to cover. 
I don't know, I was going to save the seeds. Like, I need seeds. This is all seeds falling everywhere. There's a little pomegranate tree uh, stuck back there from seed I grew way in the back there. So we'll see what happens with that. I don't need to concentrate on this. If I was gardening all the time, I wouldn't be able to make videos. And I really enjoy that because I like doing DIYs and stuff. And I've been playing around with the hummingbirds. The hummingbirds and the Orioles, they wait. It's, we've literally, I never planned on this, developed a bird sanctuary here when it comes to them. And they watch me. If I come out with something, they want to see what I've got. So it's been the funniest thing. I can make all the funniest hummingbird feeders and they will try anything. That's how trusting they are. Gary said he calls it conditioning. I call it trust because they watch me. If I put something down in designated areas, they will come and see. And that is part of it. They know me. Whether they would eat out of all those other things, I don't know. So, uh, helicopters. Okay, a simple flyover, that's good. Probably checking for fires and stuff. But, you know, I don't, I don't know if they would try it in other places. I only have one area that I do that in. So that's pretty much it. I've been playing around with hummingbird feeders. Look at the first fruit beetle flying around. Uh, we have not had that many fruit beetles this year, which has been really interesting because last year we had tons of them. And I even bought all these fancy hats for 99 cents, being ready for the fruit beetles that used to get stuck in my hair and fly at me. But there's only been the occasional ones, and it, I believe it's the weather condition we had this past spring. They did not come out of the ground like they usually get ready. I haven't even seen that many grubs. Usually I would dig in the wood chips and find all the, the grubs from the fruit beetles, but not this year. I have not found any. Now, I'm sure there were, of course, but instead of having, let's say, 10, we had one. You know, basically, I'm just throwing those numbers at you to kind of explain that. So that's basically it. And Gary's bees, they're doing good. He said they're ready to break off. And he said there's just that box is packed. So he's, he's really happy. He wanted bees so bad. He is so happy with his bees. So that's it for today. Going to continue to work in my garden. It's so green and so beautiful. I love working early in the morning and I love working until it gets pitch black at night where I can't see anymore. And I guess that's it. So with that, have a wonderful day. And I hope I've given you some ideas. Get tool if you're having any problems because tool has been wonderful. Don't get bird netting. Bird, this is just kind of a fabric that, that I don't know, that make plants grow on it. It's not that good. But don't get, don't get bird netting. Bird netting is made out of like a fishing line. And when you get bird netting, birds do get caught in it. This is how a lot of places used to trap birds in other countries. They would put bird netting up, they get their leg caught in it, and the more they try to t untwist, the more they get caught in it. I wouldn't put bird netting. You want to get rid of birds, get tool. That's really the best way, and you can cover anything you wanted. If I was going to save seed, I would cover it with tool. Just throw some tool on top. They can't get to it. They can land on the tool. They can sit on it. They can climb around, but uh, they're really not going to do much else with tool. There's the tool there. I just love the tool. So I guess that's it. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.